Welcome back to our online education success series. In this episode of the Explorations Learning Network, we'll be diving into e-learning media. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. A century ago, educational media consisted of books, chalk, and a slate tablet. <laughs> In fact, some teachers were even afraid of the newest technology of the day, the pencil. Boy, we've come a long way since then. Today's students access information on all types of media. Obviously, books are still around, but many students are now reading ebooks on their computers and tablets. But just what is an ebook? An ebook or electronic book. <laughs> Most ebooks are published as portable document formats or PDF. Digital text and graphics are saved as images and stored in a PDF file. These files are then shared to your e reader, computer, tablet, or cell phone where you can read them. <laughs> In addition to ebooks, students are also watching on demand video, listening to podcasts and audiobooks, playing video games, watching internet television and streaming video, reading web pages, sending text messages, interacting in social media, browsing image libraries, creating presentations, reading wikis, writing wikis, building interactive games, building robots. <sighs> Some ebooks like those created with Apple's iBook author software, include videos, interactive quizzes, and games. You can even take notes and bookmark your pages. Rather than reading an ebook on a computer, many readers prefer to use an e-reader to view ebooks. In fact, according to the smart folks at the Pew Research Center as of November 2012, 25% of all Americans own an e-reader, which include devices such as the Nook, the Kindle, Kindle Fire, and the iPad. These amazing devices can hold as many books as a small library. An estimated 6,000 books fit in an e-reader with 8 gigabytes of memory. Wow, the classroom sure has changed in the past 100 years. Scratch that, in the last 10 years. <laughs> Let's look at some statistics. According to the results of the most recent Internet and American Life Project library survey from the researchers at the Pew Research Center, almost one quarter of all Americans aged 16 and older are reading ebooks, which is an increase of 5% over the past year. Even more amazing, the number of Americans reading traditional paper books dropped by 5%. In fact, in the second quarter of 2011, the Association of American Publishers stated that ebooks have tripled from the previous year and are now outselling printed books. And even though 25% of Americans own an e-reader, according to the Pew researchers, a third of e-book readers read e-books on their cell phones. But e-books are only a portion of the types of media students use in school. There's only one thing better than reading a book, having someone else read it to you. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Although audiobooks are not selling as fast as ebooks, in 2012, audiobook sales increased by 37%. <sighs> Wouldn't it be nice to cuddle up in your most comfortable chair and Listen to Patrick Stewart read the Chronicles of Narnia to you, or Hugh Laurie reading Gulliver's Travels, or Christopher, Wa I can't do Christopher Walken, but Christopher Walken reading Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Unlike the audiobooks of the past, which came on cassette tape or CDs, now, thanks to the internet, you can download over 100,000 titles directly to your iPhone or tablet. In fact, many ebook publishers are now introducing books that will read to you. 
Finally, we should take a look at my favorite e-learning media, the podcast. Wikipedia defines the podcast as an episodic series of audio, radio, video, PDF or e-published files streamed to a computer or digital device. The term podcast is a derivation of the idea of broadcast media, such as radio or television news, streamed to one of the original portable media players, the Apple iPod. But podcasts with a lowercase p, such as the Explorations Learning Network, are not limited to broadcasting on the iPod. You can listen to podcasts on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or satellite radio. There are many amazing podcasts in many different forms available to listeners and viewers. According to the People's Choice Podcast Awards, some of the top education podcasts of 2012 include The Day and Tech History, Caustic Soda, Grammar Girl, Hardcore History, The History Chicks, and Smart People Podcasts. Way to go, Grammar Girl, for winning the 2012 Podcast Award for Best Education Podcast. Like other e-learning media, the great thing about podcasts is the convenience. You can listen or watch them at any time from anywhere. In fact, because podcasts are delivered through an RSS, or Rich Site Summary, also more commonly referred to as a really simple syndication, Podcast episodes, like this one, can be pushed to your device where they're saved so you can listen to them even if you don't have an internet connection. In addition, it's easy to go back to the podcast library and review an episode or catch the one from a few weeks ago that you missed because your roommate can fly into the door. Another great thing about podcasts is that anyone can produce and distribute them at a relatively low cost. All you need is someone who has in-depth knowledge about a particular subject, can present that information in an entertaining way, and can use technology to regularly and consistently deliver each episode to their listening audience. Catch you on the flip side. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.